Welcome to the Doverbrooks International School Virtual Open Day. The webinar will begin shortly. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> today you'll hear from some of our staff and students about life at Doverbrooks. We'll begin today's virtual open day with a welcome from Jonathan Cuff, the principal of Doverbrooks, and an introduction to the International School from our head of school, Ted McGrath. Then we'll go to our director of studies, Steve Wheeler, who will talk about our academic approach. The next presentation will be from our external communications coordinator, David Wareham, about our activities, trips, and excursions programs. We'll then hear from Deputy Head of Pastoral, Michaela Parker, about pastoral care at the International School, followed by presentations from our Head of Boarding, Felisa Diaz, about boarding at Doverbrooks, and from our Registrar, Nari Park, about the admissions process. Towards the end of the session, we're delighted to be joined by some of our current international students, Ray, Esther and Paula, who will share what it's really like to study with us. The final part of today's session will involve a Q&A session with our speakers. If you have any questions during the session, please submit these using the question box. We'll aim to answer all questions during the panel session. And now, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Jonathan to open today's session. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, good morning from a warm but rather overcast Oxford. Uh, and welcome to our virtual open event for the International School here at Doverbrooks. I'm, of course, sorry that this can be, can't be in person and that we can't welcome you to the school site to meet our fabulous staff and students in person to get a sense of the real atmosphere here at school. I am confident, however, that whilst uh, it's not the same, it's a good alternative for our prospective families around the globe to get a real sense of the school and the people behind it. Many people who visit as prospective parents or even indeed as prospective employers often comment on one word on the school's published aims and ethos, and that word is laughter. We always find it a little amusing here at school as laughter is surely key to an enjoyable and fulfilling education and we are genuinely passionate about and uh, passionate and motivated about our students loving learning, boarding, and life in general whilst here at Doverbrooks. If they're happy, you're happy, and ultimately then we are happy. Anyway, enough about that. I do hope that this event gives you a small flavour of what the school is all about. Uh, to start with, it's my great pleasure to hand you over to the head of the international school, Ted. Hello, we're delighted you're able to join us today. I hope you find the information in this virtual day, a virtual open day useful, and we look forward to answering any questions you may have at the end of this presentation. We are a small international learning community with a distinctive family feel where we have embedded a curriculum specifically designed to meet the needs of international students. The excellent academic results our students receive reflect the value added the quality of our teaching brings to our inclusive student intake profile. Here we nurture a positive and supportive learning environment and one in which the welfare, academic achievement and personal development are of paramount importance. Um, as you'll see, our pastoral care curriculum, after school and weekend programme all ensure that students' well-being and personal development is central to the educational offer of the International School here at Dover Brooks. Here are some of our key features. We accept students at various entry points throughout the year into years 9 to 11. Our class sizes are small, with a maximum of 11 usually. We have designed our own bespoke track and personal development programmes, which my colleagues will explore in greater detail shortly. And we have a full and varied after-school and weekend programme of sporting, creative, social and cultural activities and excursions. I'm often asked why choose an international school over a typically British one. The majority of our students arrive here to study for the first time in the UK and rather than expecting them to fit straight in, we're able to give them time to adapt to new, unusual teaching methods and help them understand a new curriculum. All of our teachers have had training in teaching international students in English and through a teaching style called CLIL, they're able to develop their English in biology or maths lessons as well as English ones. Also, as all of our students are international, they're in the same situation, so we're able to develop their confidence at their own pace and to focus on just their individual needs rather than fitting in in a sink or swim method in a British school. 
And finally, here students are able to study for their IGCSEs in just one year, rather than the two it would take to look at a British school, which is preferable for many parents. Next slide, please. Here are, you can see the programmes we offer. During years nine and 10, students can uh, come for one term or more uh, to sample our style of learning. From year nine onwards, we, we start our Discovery Years programme, which follows an inquiry base. Thereafter, they progress onto our two-year IGCSE programme, and then some students come for our one-year IGCSE, which I just mentioned. And finally, from me, before I hand over to go into areas in more detail, here's a typical day. So students join us for breakfast here on site at eight, and they're with us throughout the day until they leave to go back to their boarding houses at about quarter to six. You can see from the green uh, sections, this is when lessons happen. There are seven 45 minute lessons. And the uh, purple, my favorite color, uh, bits are when it's break times, lunch, or breakfast, or, you know, or dinner times. And also we start the day with 15 minutes with our form tutors getting together. So that's a small group of students, again, a maximum of about 11, where they meet with their one teacher every morning uh, to spend time with them. And Mackay will talk a bit more about that later on. So now I'm going to hand you over to our Director of Studies, Steve, to talk more about our academic approach. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, so as Ted has just been describing, we have a curriculum here at the International School, which is developed specifically for international students. And there are a number of different strands to that. So there's the, um, of course, students uh, studying towards their GCSEs or IGCSEs in one or two years. There's the inquiry-based focus in years uh, years nine and to an extent in year 10 and 11. And then also supporting students as they develop the, their 21st century learning uh, skills and attributes. So things like being able to, to collaborate, to think critically, to, um, to work with the technology that they're going to need in the future. But one thing that's very important to everything that we do is personalized learning. And you can see there a quote from Estelle, who's a current student on our two-year IGCSE programme, who said that at her old school, it felt like they were trying to finish the syllabus and force it on us. But she feels like here at Doverbrooks, it's more enjoyable and educational at the same time. And the thing that allows students to feel like that <clears throat> is really the, the very personalised approach that we take to how we, how we teach, how we educate our students. Uh, as Ted was also saying earlier, in our classes there are a maximum of 11 students normally, and that means that teachers are able to get to know their students really well. They're accessible to their students in case students have any, any questions. We encourage students to ask questions in class whenever there's anything that they don't understand or that they need further help with. And there are a number of other things that we do in order to, to provide that support for students who need academic support or stretch and challenge enrichment for students who, who would benefit from that. And you can see on the screen there a number of different things, a number of different uh, things that we provide to support our students as individuals. So one thing that I wanted to highlight is the higher project qualification. Uh, many of you may know about the EPQ, the Extended Project Qualification, that's often offered alongside A-level uh, courses. Um, at the International School, we also offer the Higher Project Qualification, which is a GCSE-level uh, project which students um, engage in, where they have to research and write a piece of academic writing, an academic report of 2,000 words. And that's on an area that, of, that students choose that's of their own interest. They work with a supervisor and they, um, some of the, the results that we've seen have been really exceptional. We also offer subject clinics and that's an opportunity for students to meet with a teacher of that subject once a week to have their questions answered, to have some additional practice, uh, in the run-up to, um, to their GCSEs in particular, but throughout their time at Doverbrooks. Students will also have 
a one-to-one -one meeting with their form tutors normally once every other week and that's something that Michaela will go into a bit more detail about later but the focus of that is how students are doing from a well-being point of view but also on the academic progress that they're making a couple of other things which really are uh, unique to um to Dover Brooks are the track program and wider learning days and that's what we're going to go on to talk about next so the track program is a, a bespoke, a unique program to Dover Brooks. Uh, because of its unique nature, we've actually been put forward for a, a prize, an internet, a prestigious international award in the past for designing this program. And the track program, it stands for the theory of research, active citizenship and knowledge. So as you can see, it's drawing together a number of different strands. Now, actually, these different strands are equivalent to three of the strands of the International Baccalaureate, Baccalaureate Diploma Program. So theory of research is similar to theory of knowledge, sorry, theory of, uh, to talk. Active citizenship um, is similar to the CAS element, and also students develop their, their, their knowledge and their research, which would enable them to, to write the extended essay that's also part of the International Baccalaureate Diploma. And the reason for that is because we want to provide students with an introduction not only to A-levels, but also if they're planning on going on to the IB Diploma to that as well. So this is a program that's been developed in-house. All of our students benefit from it, and it really stretches them in terms of their ability to think critically and to, to discuss, to, to debate, some really crucial current issues of global citizenship. Okay, next slide please, thank you. Um, the wider learning days are something that students in years nine and 10 are engaged in, uh, that's available for them. And um, they, are, they take place on a half termly basis at the end of each half term. They're a cross curricular learning opportunity and they combine a wide variety of different subjects. So they, they're organized by two or three different departments in the school. So for example, it could be arts, drama, music, working together. Uh, it could be maths and business working together as happened in a recent wider learning day. Um, and they really develop student strategic thinking, research, team working and presentation skills. And as you can see, some recent projects have included creating statues of influential historical figures, designing a two week package holiday and dramatizing a letter from a World War One soldier. All of these different things that we provide to our students in terms of the, um, the curriculum, the personalized learning, the smaller classes mean that we're able to achieve some really or our students, more importantly, are able to achieve some really excellent results. So as you can see on the slide there, last year 32% of all of the grades that our students achieved were grade nine. And that's um, that compares to just 6% nationally. 47% were grades eight and nine versus 14% nationally, and 61% were grades seven to nine. And then talking about the higher project qualification that we described earlier, 62% of students taking the HPQ achieved A star or A last year. Just wanted to also um, uh, introduce you to Andrew, who's one of who's the student that you can see on the slide there. And Andrew said that she decided to study at Dover Brooks because she wanted to come to a school in Oxford because of the, the history and the buildings. Um, she has classmates from all over the world, and she thinks that she can now say thank you in 20 different languages. And she finds the teachers international, as they're from all over the world, really helpful and really supportive. Okay, next slide, please. I just wanted to end by talking about progression. So every year, around 50% of our students continue on to Dover Brooks uh, sixth form, with another 50% going to other schools. And there's a variety of reasons why students progress onto other schools and a variety of schools that they progress onto. So you'll see on the list some of the more kind of traditional boarding schools. 
So places like um, Harrow, Headington School, Lancing College, but also some, some more kind of modern schools as well. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to hand over to Dave now, who will talk to you about activities, trips and excursions. Thank you. Hello. Uh, now that you've heard all about our academic program, it would be a great pleasure to tell you about our equally impressive range of activities away from the classroom. Next slide, please. As you can see, it really is a very wide range of activities that we have on offer. Some of these take place on Thursday morning, some are lunchtime clubs, and many are after school. In fact, we have four or five that take place every day after school. For example, today we have art, tennis, yearbook, yoga, and even gardening. We have a beautiful big garden in the school that we're able to use for our gardening club. There are lots of sports options, some which you'd, which you'd commonly expect from a school, such as basketball and running, but also some more unusual options, such as polo and golf. And it's worth noting that many of these, such as the two I just mentioned, are done with the students from the other two sites at Doverbrook. So our students do get to meet and get to know the British students studying there, which is important for us. There are also a number of performing arts options, such as uh, school orchestra, school band or choir. And for students who aren't sporty or performing artists, we also have options such as STEM club, robotics or Model UN. The last one's another example of a club that takes place on one of the other two sites involving the British students. Basically, there's something of interest for every student. And finally, it's worth pointing out that if the student is passionate about something, Something that we don't offer, we can almost always find a local club such as at the university and enroll them there on weekends or after school. Next slide, please. So it isn't just during the school week that students take part in extracurricular activities. Every Saturday and Sunday, we have a trip or activity taking place. As you can see, they include excursions to famous UK cities, such as London, where I ran a sightseeing trip just a few weeks ago. And on Saturday, Steve took the students to Thorpe Park theme park to ride the roller coasters. Recently, we've also been to Stonehenge and to a professional football match. We also have many sites worth visiting in and around Oxford itself, such as Blenheim Palace, which is a UN World Heritage Site. And we also sometimes take them to concerts or theater performances too. Anne, one of our former students here, puts it well in her comment there. One of the significant trips was to Blenheim Palace, and uh, we also went to the Royal Albert Hall in London to see the Cinderella Ballet. As I mentioned, there are many opportunities for our students to take part in whole school music and drama productions, which take place in our beautiful Cohen Hall up at our sixth form site just up the road. This is a shot of our whole school orchestra performing in a recent concert. We don't always use the hall for whole school events though, but sometimes for our own smaller concerts too, involving just the TIS students. An example of that was our Christmas open mic event at the end of the first term and our annual International Arts Festival, which happens at the end of the second term. Next slide, please. This is an example of one of our more local trips. Mr. Village Retail Outlet is actually the second most visited attraction in the UK for Chinese tourists, and it's only 15 minutes away by train. In addition to the designer boutiques, uh, there are also lots of cafes where they enjoyed socializing over some refreshments. And we took our students there the weekend before last. As you can see, they, they really enjoyed it. And the whole school ski trip happens every year. In addition to learning how to ski, it, again, it's another way for our international students to get to know the British students from the other two sites. I've actually run a few of these myself, including one to Colorado and one to California. The last one we went on was the stunning resort of Madonna di Campiglio in the Italian Dolomite Mountains. One of the members of our PE staff is actually a qualified ski guide, and she'll be running the next one, which I believe is to Banff in Canada. Thanks very much. I'm going to hand over now to Michaela. Thanks, Dave. That was a whistle-stop tour of the huge amount of activities that we have in the school. So my name is Michaela and I'm the Deputy Head of Pastoral Care at the International School. So what is pastoral care? Well, it's to ensure that every student feels safe, happy and secure in their learning. So our aim is to keep lines of communication with you open so that we can provide a holistic support for our students. Because we know that if we if we keep build on communication and we build on our students' well-being, then they will succeed. So as has been mentioned earlier, our, our, all of our students are in small groups. So that's for subject classes, but it also extends to tutor groups. And there are two ways that students can re receive support. In their tutor groups, they have a form tutor. So the first way is they, they meet in their tutor group every morning. 
um, and they have a morning registration. But in addition to that, there are also individual meetings and we call these one-to-one -one meetings. And students will have um, an organized meeting with their form tutor uh, approximately once every couple of weeks on a rotational basis. Um, so that's an element of personalized care that we provide. Um, and pastoral care is really at the forefront of our minds, here it is. Um, and the form tutor's role is to oversee the students' well, well-being, but also their academic progress. And they are seen as the significant adult in the school for our students. And they are the main person that are in regular contact um, with the house parents in the boarding house, um, and also the parents and guardians to provide the wraparound care. So at TIS, our staff, community, our staff community all have a very clear understanding about the importance of pastoral care to the achievement of our international students. So what you can see on the screen here are our six learner attributes. So these are the main ways in which we develop our students' character and the learner attributes underpin everything that we do in the school. The purpose of them is to highlight character traits that we assume students already have, but we then provide opportunities for our students to develop them further. The main aim of developing international mindedness in our students so that wherever they are in the world, they can have a positive impact. They're referenced in lessons and they're linked to 21st century learning skills. And there will be specific activities in lessons um, for example, it might be a, a starter activity, a warm-up activity, where an image is given to the students and they're encouraged to see, think and wonder about the image as a way of promoting discussion and curiosity, as well as critical thinking. Um, they're also referenced in our wider school activities in tutor time. So, for example, we've re recently had Earth Day. So they'll be given a, a question that's linked to Earth Day and they'll be go through a range of different scenarios to discuss those questions. And then they will vote on their understandings of it, which they can then have an outcome which could be actioned in the school. So our personal development is a program um, which in the timetable is one lesson, one 45 minute lesson every week. Um, and the core themes of this program are based on health and well-being, relationships and living in the wider world. Um, we have an international curriculum in place, place that builds on concepts, for example, risk, identity, power and change. And we also make links to international celebrations. So, for example, Anti-Bullying Week, we've recently had Mental Health Awareness Week, International Women's Day, and I spoke about Earth, Earth Day as well. So these are international events that most um, that will happen in every school, but we want to give students more opportunity to develop these ideas further. So we link them to our personal development programme. At the beginning, when students first arrive, we use these lessons to support our students to adjust to our culture. We talk to them about managing culture shock, how to stay connected with home, as well as equipping them with self-care strategies um, to manage their own well and mental health, whilst also being aware of the different levels of support that they can access in the school. And then we move on to other topics such as positive mental health to achieve success, positive relationships, as well as things like finance, management and careers. Um, but even though there is this curriculum in place, it's flexible. An example of this is during the COVID-19 pandemic, we adapted our own bespoke program to respond to the needs of our students at, at that time. And it had four main elements, community action, relationships and enjoyment. So students in these lessons will take part in a variety of wellbeing centred activities, such as house challenges for baking and photography. Um, another example of how we're responding to a need at the moment, our year 11 students are in the, in the throes of their examinations right now. So we are staying in tune with how they're doing from week to week and we're um, putting in place a lesson on, on the Friday as it falls this year for um, any needs that are, are coming up. So recently we've, we've spoken about sleep, we've spoken about managing anxiety to make sure that they feel equipped to manage their stress levels at this, at this challenging time. 
So our pastoral care and support, this is a summary of what types of pastoral care we offer. Um, in summary, pastoral care is, is the wraparound care. So students go to their subject lessons and pastoral care is essentially anything else that, that goes on. Um, but fundamentally, at the international school, we are a caring and compassionate community and support is really at the forefront of our minds when a student enrolls with us. So this starts at the point of induction. Um, so families that are, on, are listening to this um, virtual open event today, um, thank you for enrolling your students with us. We'll shortly be in touch um, to arrange some online um, meetings um, for your children and to start our induction programme before they arrive. Um, and then when they do arrive, we have um, an in-school induction programme and we also have a boarding house induction programme. So the in-school induction programme will be helping students to adjust to our 21st century learning approach in the classroom. But it will also be giving them lots of opportunities for them to have fun, make new friends, get into the routine of speaking English all day. Um, so, so really trying to bring students together and feel settled. Um, then in the boarding house, um, which Felisa will talk to you a little bit more about in, in a moment, the induction might be things like a film night, an open mic night, and being able to also get to grips with the fundamentals of being in the boarding house, such as using the washing machine. Their house parent is the person that is there to ensure their well-being, to ensure they're eating and sleeping well and making the most of their leisure time. But also uh, we have an additional layer of pastoral support in school. Um, we have a school counsellor and a school nurse, which students can book appointments with or we can make referrals um, for them. As I've mentioned, we have the tutor group morning sessions together and in addition, those one to one individual meetings. Um, and then in addition to all of that, we really want to emphasise the international context of our students and look to celebrate all nationalities and cultures. So we have international celebrations um, throughout the year. For example, um, on Saturday is World Cultural Diversity and Development Day. So we had a celebration for that this morning. Um, and last week was International Day of Light. So we really do encourage internationalism. And that extends to the weekend. So at the weekend, students go up to the sixth form and they have meals together. And as Dave has mentioned, school productions, um, the DOV events, Duke of Edinburgh Awards, and the ski trip. Um, which was he mentioned last there. So in summary, we aim to create as many happy events as possible in our school. Um, and an example of that is for students' birthday, we have a cake and we take a, a card to them in the tutor group. And then there are other events from time to time, such as ice cream vans, um, just to bring students together um, from time to time to have a celebration. So finally, our amazing setting, we're so lucky to be in Oxford, it's got loads of history, it's really safe to explore and we have a beautiful school and grounds for students to relax and feel comfortable in. So I hope that gives you uh, an overview of our comprehensive pastoral care at Doverbrooks and how it really it is important to us and I'd like to hand over to Felisa Diaz, Head of Boarding. Thank you, Michaela. So I'm very happy to be here today uh, to tell you a little bit about boarding at Doverbrooks. We currently have over or nearly, I think, 300 boarders from a very wide range of countries, um, and this number is expected to grow. At the International School, we currently have nearly 100 boarders. Our primary aim in the boarding houses is to create a welcoming and com comfortable home from home atmosphere where our students can study effectively and flourish as individuals. We really want them to enjoy our time with us, as Michaela has, has mentioned, and Oxford is a great place to study and our boarding houses are within easy reach of the school and also the many other opportunities that Oxford offers in the city centre and around the school. So in terms of the international school, we currently have three boarding houses. They all have some communal space, a kitchen where students can prepare snacks, TV, access to Netflix, DVDs um, and indoor and outdoor games. And there's also a piano in all the houses. So looking at each of the houses in turn, as you can see on the screen, uh, first we have Nash House. Uh, so Nash House is for year 11 girls only and is all double rooms with ensuite bathrooms. And there's a nice large garden where students can play outdoor games. Nash House is just across the road from the main school building. 
Wyville is offered to year 11 girls and boys. It's made up of five pods. Each pod has a communal space, uh, a kitchen area, which you can see on screen, um, and is single gender. Each pod accommodates five or six students. There's mostly single rooms, but there are a couple of rooms, and we rotate these so that it's fair on everybody. Uh, and there is an outdoor space with table tennis. Wyville's just a few minutes walk uh, from the city centre, and there's a school bus that brings students in and out of school every day. St Philip's, the larger of the three houses, is for years 9, 10 and 11. St Philip's is made up of two houses. Each house is single gender, so one is for girls, one is for boys. The house is set in really lovely grounds, uh, has mostly single and double rooms. And again, these are rotated so that it's fair on everybody because students usually, um, you know, a lot of them want, want a single room, so we rotate them. Uh, again, there's a bus that brings students in and out of school every day. Each house has at least two residential staff. St Philip's, for example, has more because it's larger and they will look after our students while they're in our care. As Michaela has touched upon already, the boarding team uh, liaise really closely with school staff to make sure that they're well cared for and that any issues are dealt with quickly and effectively. In terms of the medical care provided for our boarders, uh, we have a school nurse who's available uh, every day during the week and can advise uh, students on, on minor issues. And all our boarders are also registered at a medical centre very close by where they can access a doctor. And for more serious issues, we're really close to the main Oxfordshire hospital. Uh, all meals are served in the school building. Again, Michaela's talked a bit about this already. Um, during the week, they have meals in school and at weekends, they join the sixth form at our main sixth form building. In the houses, we always have plenty of snacks like fruit, bread, cheese, uh, biscuits, uh, hot drinks, and students can make snacks in, in the small kitchen that each house has. This year, due to an increase in demand, we are looking to take on a fourth boarding house for students studying at our international school. Um, we don't yet have information or pictures, but we're very much hoping to secure a beautiful house right across the road from the main school building, which will probably be for year 11 boys. As students are confirmed, I will be writing to them and at that point we'll be able to provide more information. Uh, I'm going to pass over now to Nari, who will tell you a bit more about the admissions process. Thank you. Thank you, Felisa. Hello, everyone. My name is Nari and I look after admissions, uh, international admissions at Dover Brooks. So some of you have already gone through our assessment process. It's very straightforward. So the first step is to make an application form through our website, www.doverbrooks.com. Go to admissions, then international school. You will find a link to the application form and you can start filling your information such as your current school and which year, which year you, you wish to apply. When completing the form, we ask students to upload a copy of their current passport photo page, a recent school transcript and a personal statement. So the personal statement, a lot of people ask about this and we do take it very importantly because it is a way that we can get to know about the students. So there's no limit in length or there's no limit in the contents, but most students choose to write information they would like to share with the school, such as their school life, um, their favourite subjects, any sports, the musical instruments they play, or why they want to study in Oxford and what they want to um, do in the future. Once we receive a complete application and where appropriate, we will ask students to come um, to see the online test in English and Maths. So these are online tests, so students do not need to worry about um, coming all the way to Oxford and see the test. So on the strict examinations um, conditions, students can see the test either at their current school, local British Council office or agency office. So usually the test results are available within two to three working days. After the interview, the next step will be an attempt to attend an interview. Um, usually we, we encourage students to come visit the school, meet Ted, um, who's head of school, um, other students and teachers and have an in-person interview. 
but we appreciate that this may not be an easy option for um, students and parents living overseas, so we also offer a Zoom interview. So the interview will be done by one of our senior staff, usually by David or Ted, um, and then the interview will be in an informal setting. So the interview will ask students um, about their school life, um, their um, favourite subjects, um, and then what they want to be in the future. So, and the interview is always a good opportunity for students to ask any questions they may have about the school, so such as their boarding life, extracurricular activities, um, school trips and excursions. So these are a part of our assessment process and an offer will be made um, on a combination of factors such as their school report, reference um, and interview feedback. And when an offer is made um, and then the students and family would like to accept the interview, which we are always delighted to hear, um, their place is secured with a deposit, acceptance fee and a complete enrollment form. Um, in the enrollment form, there are different sections, but we would appreciate if families can um, tell us in advance whether their kids, uh, whether their child needs any support so we can accommodate their needs. So this is all from me and now you're going to meet some of our students. Thank you, Nari. Yes, we are now going to hear from some of our um, current international students about what it's really like to study here with us. So if I could ask the students to turn their web cameras on and I'm going to hand over to Dave, who will be facilitating the discussion with our students. Thanks very much. So joining us today is Paula from Germany, Ray from China by way of Cyprus and Esther from Hong Kong. So the first question we have is for Paula. Why did you decide to study in the UK? So I decided to study in the UK because I wanted to improve my English language. Um, I wanted to study here because of the experience to meet new people from all over the world and to make it easier to get in a top UK university. Okay, thanks. And um, the second question for you, Paolo, why did you decide to study at Dover Brooks International specifically? I got it recommended by some friends and Dover Brooks has really good exam results and good reviews, so I wanted to study here. Okay, thanks. Next one for Esther. What do you like about living and studying in Oxford? Well, um, having the prestigious university that is Oxford University, um, Oxford has a very academic environment. Particularly, there's a, a few museums and art galleries that I like going to. And there is also an artistic side to Oxford. For example, there are some musicals and plays at the New Oxford Theatre. And there's also some artistic galleries and showcases in the fire stations, which I particularly like going to. Thanks. And uh, next one's for Ray. What are your favourite things about Oxford, uh, or, or about Doverbrooks, actually, Ray? Oh, I think you're muted, um, Ray, if you want to unmute. Thanks. Uh, hello? We can hear you now. Thanks, Ray. So what are your favorite things about Dover Brooks? Okay, so like all the different activity that I can try, like new things like golf, uh, polo, and I can, and the, my most favorite thing is that I don't have to wear like ties, jacket, like the normal British school. Okay, thanks. Um, next one's for Esther. How is the teaching different at TIS from your own country? Because um, I come from Hong Kong and I was I studied in a government school and comparatively the class size is much smaller. Back then my entire class had 33 students. Right now I think most of my classes have like 7 to 10 students at maximum. And I there is way less homework and um, a lot more classwork and also I get to use my device more and the internet and our digital resources more in learning. Thanks. And the next one's for Paolo again. What's your favorite subject and why? 
So I have two favorite subjects. My first one is biology. I really like it because we have two big labs here and it's always fun to make experiments and try different techniques to find out the solution in, in our own way. And I also like history because we learn new things every time and it's different and exciting to learn about different and new cultures. Thank you. And the next one's for Ray. What clubs or Thursday activities have you done this year? So for the clubs, I'm done. I'm doing the gym and tennis for this term. And in Thursday activity, I do basketball, which like sometimes we can compare with sixth form and do some matches. And there's still like even a lot of more clubs and Thursday activity that we can join. Okay, and um, thanks for that. And what weekend trips have you been on this year? So there's many of them, like Throw Park that we just went this weekend, and the Stonehenge London trip, and we even watch a football match for the Manchester United. United. Great. And finally, what are you planning to um, study at? Uh, well, are you planning on going to Doverbrook Six Form? <laughs> Murray, that's my first question. What are you planning to study if you do? Uh, so, like, most most of my friends are going to Six Form to study, like, next next year. And then they also have a very good A-level result, so we can choose, like, top university in the UK to go to. Okay, thanks. And and the last one, I'm going to make this an open question. Anyone, Any of you can choose to answer this. Um, what advice would you give to a student who's thinking of joining the international school? Uh, so, like, just don't be shy to make friends because all the student here is very nice and kind and get to know uh, people from other countries and know other cultures and join some after school club to make more friends and maybe make some Blackford friends. Um, I also want to add on to the academic aspects of it. I think. Um, particularly if you're from an Asian country or if you particularly want to learn more, it's very important to set your own goals and ask for help when you need it. Maybe sometimes the curriculum covers some things you don't know or maybe you want to learn more. And I think if you want to um, squeeze out the academic juice, as I would say, um, you would really have to take a very proactive approach in your academic side. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, you can um, close your uh, your video screens now, and we're going to move on to the final part of the presentation. Thanks very much. Yes, thank you all. That was fantastic, and uh, really great to hear from from those students. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left, so for the Q and A session, I'll just pick a few of the questions that have come in. If we don't have time to answer your question, we'll follow up individually with anybody who has uh, sent in a question in the chat box that we haven't had time to answer. So uh, I'd like to welcome back our speakers, Ted, Head of International School, Michaela, the Deputy Head of Pastoral, Steve, Director of Studies, Dave, External Communications Coordinator, Felice, the Head of Boarding, and Nari, our International School Admissions Registrar. Um, and if the, the students are still there, they are more than welcome to uh, answer any of these questions that have come in. Uh, so first of all, one of the questions we have is, how many IGCSEs or GCSEs can I study if I join the international school? Okay, I'll take that. Uh, that really depends on the, the year that the, uh, the student goes into and the course that they're on. So students who go into year 10 on the two-year IGCSE programme will be doing English, Maths and six separate options, option subjects. Um, and that really leads to them uh, taking between 8 to 11 IGCSEs at the end of year 11. Students who come for the one-year intensive IGCSE programme straight into year 11 will be doing uh, English and Maths plus three other options. And those options are things like physics, biology, chemistry, business, geography, history. There's a really wide range. Those students will end up with between five to eight IGCSE qualifications. Great, thank you, Steve. Uh, the next question, someone has asked, what's the mobile phone policy for students? I can take that. Um, 
So our mobile phone policy, um, we, we use devices in school as a way of learning, but our students come with a laptop or an iPad, which is then a tool for their, for their learning in the classroom. And our mobile phones, we recognise that students want to stay in contact. So we provide time first thing in the morning for students to, to call home and then at the end of the day. Um, so during the day from 8.30 to 4 o'clock, we ask for phones not to be out so that students can focus on their studies. Great, thank you, Michaela. Um, as we're so short of time, we'll take one more question, which is quite an important one. Are there places still available to join the International School this September? Um, yeah, applications are welcome um, in all your groups here, 9, 10 and 11. Great, thank you, Nari. Uh, and in fact, some of our um, uh, regional recruitment uh, colleagues are on, on this session and will be in touch with uh, relevant families and agents after the call to see if there's any further support and advice that they can offer. But in the meantime, thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you to those who've submitted questions. If we weren't able to answer them, as mentioned, we will follow up. Um, so thank you to our panelists for their talks and to our audience for your questions. Uh, if you would like to get in touch about the next stage in the process, or if you have any further questions, you can contact our international admissions team at international at doverbrooks.com. And they can uh, respond with uh, whatever further information you need for the next step in your journey to join the Dover Brooks family. In the meantime, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we hope to hear from you very soon and uh, the recording of this webinar will be available within the next few days on YouTube. Uh, and in the meantime, that's goodbye from all of our Dover Brooks colleagues. <laughs>